Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make an admin command system for your Roblox games. Let's get started. Let's start by adding a folder into service group service and we'll rename this to admin commands. Oops, if I can spell correctly, that is. Next, inside of this folder, we're going to add a script, a module script, and something called a configuration. And this script is going to be what handles all of like getting the chat message and kind of checking if it's a real command and send it over to the commands module. So we can call this a command handler. Then the module script is going to be where all of the commands actually are. So we can call this commands module. And this configuration is just going to have stuff like what are the prefixes for commands, stuff like that. So instead of changing the name, we'll just add an attribute to this. We'll call it prefix. And make sure type is set to string. Click save. And then we'll just um, set this to be a forward slash for now. You can change this if you like, but I'm going to keep it at that. Now, let's start by going into our commands handler and basically referencing all of our other items. So we can say local admin commands folder equals script dot parent local commands module equals admin commands folder one bit for child commands module and make sure that this is inside of something is inside of a require as this is a module script and cover that up as well then we can say local config equals admin commands folder colon wait for child configuration and we can say local prefix equals config colon get attribute in speech marks we can say prefix now that that's done we can check if the player has actually sent something in the chat to do this we can say game dot players dot player added colon connect function player this detects when a player has joined the game and then when a player joins the game we're going to continuously check if they've sent a message in chat so we can say player dot chatted colon connect function open bracket message now that we have this what we want to do is um check if this message starts with the prefix right because if it does it's going to be a command and if not it's going to be a normal message right local message starts with the prefix equals string dot match prefix comma actually my bad um message comma then in speech box you do shift six which gives you a hat like character dot dot prefix what this is going to do is it's going to check if the first character in the message is our prefix if it is it's going to return true if not it's going to return false then you can just say if message starts with prefix then we know that this is meant to be a command then we can separate out the stuff we need versus the stuff we don't need let's start by getting rid of the prefix because we don't need that anymore we can say message equals string dot split message comma prefix this will divide the message into a table so it will be first item is prefix is our prefix whereas the second item is the command name and any arguments that we've passed along to it right 
then we are going to further divide the second item so we're going to say local split string equals string dot split message to mass space so this is going to take the second item in our array and then further split it by the spaces so we're going to end up with a new array where item one is of my name item two will be our argument so on and so forth now we'll take the command name itself out of that to check if it's a real command we have. You can do this by saying local command name equals split string one. And now since um like a player can type in a bunch of different ways, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the um, we're going to take the command name, we're going to split it up, we're going to make the first letter capital, and then we're going to make the rest of the letters lowercase. To do this, we can say command name is equal to string dot uh, upper, and then in these brackets, string dot sub, and then we can say message comma one comma one. So we're going to make the first letter capital. Then we're going to say dot dot string dot lower and then in brackets string dot sub message comma two comma negative one. This is going to make the rest of the letters lowercase and then dot dot basically means to concatenate them. So join them together. Now we're going to check if this is a command we actually have in our module. To do this, we'll say if commands module square brackets command name, then we know this is a real command. After this, we want to pass on all of the information required, right? So, first off, let's start by getting a table of our arguments. We can say local command arguments is equal to split string. And then we'll just say table dot remove command arguments one. So this will remove the first item from our split string, which is the command name, leaving us with just the arguments. After this, we're just going to say commands module command name, and then in brackets we're going to say player command args. So what we're passing is just the player that sent the message and all of the arguments that typed along with it. Now in our commands module, we'll just rename this module to match up with our script name. For this tutorial, I'm going to be doing a levitate command, which is basically controlling your character's hip height to make them levitate. Obviously, you can do much more, but this is just really simple and um, easy to understand. So we can say function commands module dot levitate in brackets player and arguments. Enter. Now inside of here, we want to get the player's humanoid item. By saying local humanoid equals player dot character put on wait for child humanoid next we're gonna check if the first item in the arguments table can be made into a number because the humanoid hip height only accepts numbers so we'll say if uh, if two number arguments one then so now we know that this can be turned into a number it's a humanoid dot height equals up to number arguments one if you go ahead and test this out uh, we should be able to do slash limited Five. We have an error. 
Mm. Ah, okay. So we split up the message, right? Accidentally. No, sorry. Uh, so when splitting this up, obviously you wanna split up the command name. You don't wanna split up the message. Uh, let's go try that out again. And for some reason, my explorer has disappeared. Let's just add that back. Let's say slash levitate five, and we are now floating off the ground. Nice. After we do this, we want to only allow this to be for admins, right? Because we don't want any normal players just messing up everything. Now, normally, what you would do here is you would have a table of all of the like all of the user IDs of the players who are allowed to do this. But I'm going to be doing a using data stores instead because I like I personally don't like having a table hard code like that. Because let's say you want to add an admin to your game, the changes won't take effect until after the server has shut down and started up again. Whereas the data stores it's almost instant. You can say to do this and don't worry if you've never used data stores, I'll make it very simple for this video. We can say local data source service equals game colon get service data store service then we say local admin status store equals data store service colon get data store admins data store now in here what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the data store check in a p call because if like for example the data store errors and maybe servers have shut down this it's not gonna just kill the entire script right so we can say local player is admin comma error message equals p call function enter inside of here we can just say admins data store hold on get async and let's say player no get async player dot user id and then down here we'll just say if message starts with prefix and player is admin then okay after you do this what you want to do is you want to add yourself as an admin right so we'll go over to the command uh, bar down on your window if you don't have this go to view and choose command bar so we can say here game dot data store service do not get data store admins data store hold on set async then you want to put your user ID in here. You can do this by going on the website, by going to roblox.com and checking what the user ID of your profile is. So we can paste it in there and then we'll just set the value for true. This doesn't really matter. We can hit enter. And if we hit play, And let's try it out again. You can see that it should work. Um, it will work in game, but by default, it doesn't work in studio. So what you want to do is you want to go to game settings. You want to go to security and make sure that this enable studio access to API services is turned on. This allows Roblox Studio to make, interact with the Roblox Data Stores. And that should be it for this tutorial. Hopefully, this tutorial worked for you. 
if it did make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more videos like this if you had any trouble i'll try and help you down in the comments below also give any video suggestions you would like in the comments i will see you in the next video peace